Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my presentation, Learning and Exploring Motor Skills with Space-Time Bonds. Equipping characters with diverse motor skills is the current bottleneck of physics-based character animation. Recent works combines deep reinforcement learning, also known as DRL, and imitation reward to get robust controllers that generate natural motions. A critical part of their framework is to design imitation reward so that controllers are encouraged to track input references. However, tracking-based DRL methods evaluate the quality of motor skills based on rewards that are real numbers. Such rewards only encourage but do not guarantee similarity between the learned skill and the reference motion. However, uh, for example, when encounter challenging motion segments, the learned controller tend to skip challenging parts to get higher cumulative rewards, which is not what we want. Another disadvantage of tracking-based method is that they encourage to stay close to reference motion as much as possible. So when the reference motions are of low quality, such as interpolated from sparse keyframes, tracking-based methods may fail due to the physical impossibility of the reference motion. It also inherently prohibits an exploration for style variations. We want to develop a deep reinforcement learning framework that enables physics-based characters to learn and explore motor skills from reference motions, which only requires simple reward design, is more robust to low-quality reference and challenging motions, and in addition, supports style exploration when combined with stylized rewards. We observe that there is strong temporal correlations between successive states in physics-based character animation, which is mainly caused by the restriction of physical laws and system dynamics. By imposing extra constraints to the character states in space-time, we can effectively shape the feasible region and then robustly learn to train controllers to perform motion tasks. Our idea is to use loose space-time constraints, termed space-time bounds, to limit the search space in early termination fashion. So during training, the RL system only samples and accepts states within the space-time bounds specified. This mechanism, on one hand, allows freer exploration when low-quality reference or stylized reward is provided and on the other hand, impose hard constraints to guarantee learned controllers respect challenging parts. Here are some results. First, on challenging motions, take breakdance as in an example. Our framework can learn controllers that reproduce sharp turns in breakdance, while tracking-based methods can't. Second, on low-quality reference, our method can find physically plausible solution that realizes reference motion. Last, on style exploration, our framework can generate various styless motions by combining with style rewards. Before going into details of our work, I'd like to mention related works on character animation synthesis. The methods mainly fall into two categories methods based on kinematic models and methods based on physics-based models. The methods based on kinematic models can generate natural movement or synthesize stylized motion. Our work all are inspired by them. But kinematic models don't guarantee physical plausibility of synthesized motions. Our work handle motion synthesis and style exploration in a physics-based framework. Physics-based models guarantee physical plausibility of synthesized motions, but are usually hard to design or learn. Early works require manual works to design controllers and is hard to generalize to other motions. When reference motions are available, many methods can generate motions by tracking the reference. Tracking example motions, however, does not work on low-quality references and prohibits exploration of new motion styles. Deep reinforcement learning is a relatively new and effective approach to learn, uh, to learn physics-based motor skills. The de novo methods synthesize motor skills from scratch and usually generate unnatural jerking motions. 
When kinematic reference motions are available, a more effective approach is to add an imitation reward term to encourage tracking of the reference. The imitation reward, however, shares the same weakness with previous tracking-based methods, that is, it doesn't work well on low-quality reference and prohibits exploration of more stylized skills that are different from the reference. We replace reference tracking with space-time bounds that are more supportive to style exploration. In addition, space-time bounds also improve the learning robustness when the reference motion quality is low. Now, let's go into overview our method. Our method takes reference motion as input, denoted as MT. Then we construct space-time bounds from input reference. At time t, space-time bound restricts states within a region of size sigma centered at, at mt. I will detail the construction of space-time bounds later. These space-time bounds restrict and shrink, shrink the feasible region of the target motion motor skill, which influence the learning process and the final output of a control policy. Within a DRL framework, we sample an initial event from track reference and run the current policy to generate a trajectory as long as it is stay inside space-time bounds. Once the trajectory violates space-time bounds, we terminate the current episode immediately. If the learning converges, then the final optimal controller can guarantee to generate trajectories within feasible region. Following, I will detail how to construct space-time bounds and how to do DRL training. As we all know, every character animation sequence corresponds to a trajectory in space-time. Here we show the trajectory of input reference mt. Space-time bound at time t defines a subset of state space that restricts trajectories. For example, at time t0, we define a space-time bound mt0 sigma, which is a region of size sigma centered at mt0. It restricts trajectories passing through it to be within a, cent cent uh, a certain region, like joint orientations should be within 40 degrees to the reference, or end factor positions should be within 0.5 meters to the reference. Here we show three more space-time bounds. Each restricts the trajectory within a region at some moment. There are multiple physically plausible trajectories satisfies given space-time bounds. They are all treated equally in our framework. We define feasible region as union of all possible trajectories that satisfy given space-time bounds. The volume of feasible region reflects the intrinsic difficulty of the motor skill. For example, highly dynamic skills such as gymnastic backflip are usually highly constrained their intrinsic feasible regions are usually quite small to start with. Low dynamic under constraint motion, such as normal walking on flat ground, usually have larger intrinsic feasible region. In either case, feasible regions shrink rapidly when more and more space-time bounds are imposed, which implies that space-time bounds restrict and shape the solution space effectively. So, how to learn motor skills via space-time bounds in DRL system? We use similar state and action representation as deep mimic and binary survival reward for the, lear for the learning. During training, we first sample from initial states, which is the reference trajectory. We adopted some initial state, ad state adaptation schemes to improve the robustness of training. Please refer to our paper for more details. Secondly, our framework samples state action reward two tuples from interactions between control policy and system until the space-time bounds are violated. Then we use PPO, an on-policy reinforcement learning algorithm, to update control policy from collected data and then return to step one until learning converges. Our policy network consists of an open-loop feedforward controller and a feedback controller. The feedforward controller looks up the kinematic reference motion and outputs the default target joint angles. The feedback controller is a trained neural network that outputs corrections to the feedforward network. 
This structure is inspired by previous works where controls are decompose, decomposed into a feedforward component and a feedback component. When exploring, style, when exploring stylized motions, we simply multiply binary survival reward with style reward. Since binary survival reward is 1, so the final reward is just the style reward itself. We've designed two kinds of style rewards. Heuristic rewards and data-driven rewards. Heuristic rewards encourages or discourages a selective feature quantity, such as kinematic energy or convex hull volume of selected points on the character. These features are selected according to previous work on motion variation parameterization. Data-driven rewards measure the distance between grand matrices of style reference and simulated motion and encourage them to be as similar as possible. We directly use the pipeline proposed by Holden and his colleagues to extract gram matrix from motion clips. Our experiments are conducted on a desktop with 18 core CPU, where training task takes about 30 minutes to 24 hours, depending on the length and difficulty of the motor skills. In our experiments, we use following sigma as default setting for space-time bounds construction. We discussed how to choose and tune space-time bounds in our paper. Generally speaking, space-time bounds for CLM position and root orientation restrict the overall behavior of the character, such as moving forward or moving upward. Bounds on local joint orientations address, address the local pose similarity. Bounds on any factors prevent accumulated errors caused by individual joint angle deviations. We, an we analyze the sensitivity of space-time bounds by training a series of a controller using space-time bounds of different sizes, varying from tight to loose. For under-constrained motions with large initial feasible regions, such as walking, the learned policy changed notably with respect to the size of a specified space-time bounds. The looser the space-time bounds are, the more relaxed and less constrained the learned work is. For highly constrained motions with narrow initial feasible region, such as a cartwheel, too tight space-time bounds result in training failures, and too loose bounds do not influence the learned skills notably. These results reveal the interactions between the space-time bounds and the inherent feasible regions of dynamic skills. We also conduct an ablation study on our choice of a network structure and the initial state's adaptation scheme. Please refer to our paper for more details. We compare policies trained using our DRL framework with different options and the original deep mimic, keeping same parameter settings whenever possible. First, for challenging motions, the tracking-based DRL system tends to sacrifice tracking fidelity of those challenging motion segments in order to gain longer survival. In Indian dance motion, there are several difficult turns where controllers trained by the tracking-based methods tend to skip, but the controller trained through our space-time bounds can reproduce this motion faithfully. It can succeed even without an imitation reward. Second, for low quality reference, our space-time bounds treat all trajectories within the present neighborhood equally, so that the deviation from low quality reference is easier in order to achieve robust skills. In contrast, tracking-based methods have to compromise the low quality of learned skills for more accurate tracking of the bad reference to gain higher rewards. For backward jogging example, since the reference is generated by manually designed sparse keyframes through that's of low quality, the result of using space-time bounds only is even better than combining with imitation, imitation reward. We trained more controllers for various motions with space-time bounds only. These references are from CMU mocap dataset. Also, the training samples required in our framework is less than deep mimic in most cases, except for jump and backflip task. Our framework supports style exploration when combined with style rewards. 
We first combine space-time bounds with the heuristic style rewards to gener generate stylized motions. In order to generate visual different, visually different styles, we deliber deliberately loosen the space-time bounds. For example, we only bound the COM positions and root, ankle, and neck orientations for the cartwheel. We also test the style exploration using the data-driven style reward. We directly use the autoencoder from Holden and his colleagues' work to encode stylistic work motions. The grand matrix for the simulated motion is computed from the current state backward in time for a fixed duration of one locomotion cycle. We again use larger space-time bounds than those used before to support more aggressive style explorations. To validate the necessity of space-time bounds in style exploration, we conduct comparative experiments within our DRL framework. We use the weighted average of an imitation term and the heuristic style term. Here we show the results of a high style term weight. High weight for style term results in either unstable or failed motor skills, while lower weight results in successful motor skills but prohibits exploration of new styles. We also conduct another experiment by adding space-time bounds. In such case, stylized skills can be learned for all weights without any failure, but is slightly less stylized. In conclusion, we propose a deep reinforcement learning framework that robustly learns motor skills via space-time bounds. Our framework is robust to low quality reference motions and guarantees learned skills close to challenging parts. Our framework can also be combined with other rewards for style exploration. Currently, we only use static space-time bounds. It would be interesting to investigate how to adaptively adjust the space-time bounds with the experience accumulated during the learning process. We also wish to integrate, uh, integrate our stylized controllers into a more powerful system in the future, where the style, styles can be more explicitly activated. We thank Xue Bingpeng and Michael Van der Pani for their suggestions on an early draft of our, this paper. We thank Zhi Qiyin for developing the rendering code. We also thank the anonymous review, reviewers for their constructive feedback. This project is partially supported by Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, Discovery Grant Program. Thanks, everyone. Questions are welcomed.